Welcome. Today we look at the chain rule. Uh, we start with single variable calculus. <coughs> 1D chain rule. You all are familiar with that. D over dx of maybe sine of 6 to the fourth. What's this? This is a composition of two functions. So we take the derivative of the outer function, which is cosine x to the fourth. <coughs> and then we take the derivative of the inner function here. So it's 4x to the 3. So in general, <coughs> so in general what we have is d over dx of f of u of x is f prime u of x u prime of x. <coughs> so you're all familiar with the with with chain rule, or should be familiar with the chain rule in one dimension. And today we generalize this to higher dimensions. And uh, the theme under which I'm going to present this is the, is the theme of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, because what we have is a chain rule is actually a universal tool. It binds all the other rule of calculus. So it's a pretty amazing thing. But before we do that, let me just make a little bit of advertisement for this, uh, for this rule, even so you are familiar with this. But it's a very useful rule. For example, if you forget what is the derivative of uh, <coughs> arc tan. Now you all know what the derivative is, or you should know that the, what the derivative is. It's a very important uh, derivative. We can use the chain rule to derive this. Let me just explain that quickly. So what we can say is the tangent of the arc tan of x is of course equal to x. Now if we take on both sides the derivative, Of course, we get equal to 1 here. Here we get, we know the derivative of the tangent, right? That's 1 over cosine square x. So this is 1 over cosine square and then the arc tan of x. So that's what we have used here. This is the derivative of the outer function. And then times the inner derivative, which we don't know. So arc tan prime x is equal to 1. Now we have already a, a formula because we can say the arc tan prime of x is equal to, we take it on the other side, cosine square of arc tan of x. So that's already a, an answer, but we can simplify this a little bit. Let me just show how to simplify this. Uh, what we can use is the, the basic formula cosine square x plus sine square x <coughs> is equal to 1. And if we divide this on both sides with a cosine square x, so we have actually 1 over cosine square x here. So, but that's just 1 plus tangent square x is equal to 1 over cosine square x. So me meaning that uh, cosine square x <coughs> is equal to 1 over 1 plus tangent square x. So what we have is actually just, when we now take for x, we take, uh, we take arc tan x instead. So we have cosine square arc tan of x. That's equal to 1 over 1 plus tangent square and then arc tan of x. Now, what is tangent of arc tan of x? That's equal to x. Tangent square of arc tan of x, that's, that's x squared. So that's just 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this is a little. Uh, a derivation, so we can actually see this is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the reason why the arctan is so important is because this is a very important function which often appears. 
for example, it's a Cauchy distribution when we divide by pi, Cauchy distribution in statistics, very important function. And uh, so, but that's a little bit of advertisement for the single variable calculus chain rule. And what we are going to do is we go to we generalize this now to higher dimensions. Okay, to look at the chain rule in higher dimensions, we first of all must have two things which we can combine. So here we have functions of one variable which we can compose, but if we have a function of two variables, we cannot compose it with a function of two variables. So what we have to do is we have to compose it with a curve. So what we can do is we have a function f, let's do two dimensions. This is a function and then we have r of t is equal to x of t, y of t. So that's a function. <coughs> And that's a curve. So now we can compose that because we can say f of r of t. If this is the temperature and this is a pass, this tells us the temperature at the point r of t. So uh, let's do that. So what we can do is we can compose, <coughs> we can say f of r of t. So that's the function value at r of t. Maybe I make a picture here. So we have the xy plane, and uh, what we have is a curve. And then we have a function which we give as level curves. Maybe this is something like that. Maybe this is pressure or something. So f of f is equal to constant. These are the places where the pressure is constant. And so we are an aeroplane, we fly here. And what happens here, this is maybe a high pressure uh, thing. What happens is we are getting, uh, the pressure increases and then the pressure decreases. And we want to know the rate of change of this uh, uh, pressure. So this is uh, the function value evaluated at r of t. So this is now a, a a composition. So what we have is, so we have t, we think about as time, and then we get f of r of t. This is the function value at r of t. So in some sense what we measure here, f of r of t, is really key at the pressure we measure uh, as a function of time. And that's a function of one variable. This is a function of one variable. We can differentiate that. We can say what is d over dt f of r of t. Now we have already seen what the linearization uh, does. And so what, what, what happens here is that both the, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to, to y matters. But I'm just not, I'm writing that down directly in the form like in single variable calculus. It's just that we have to replace f with a derivative for functions of several variables, which is this nabla, which we have introduced last time. Let me just uh, remind you about this the nabla. So nabla f of x, y, uh, plus this vector f x, x, y, <coughs> f y, x, y. So, and then, uh, then what can we compose this with? What is the analog of u prime here? We have also a derivative of r, and the derivative of r we have already seen, that's the, that's the velocity. So now, of course, we have to take the dot product. And that's already the multivariable chain rule. So please keep it like that. Keep it as simple as this. This is uh, all we need. <clears throat> this is the multivariable calculus chain rule. <clears throat> By the way, the simplest way to prove this uh, chain rule also in single variable is to linearize the functions. Take linear functions. For linear functions, you can check it directly. And then by uh, linearization very close to a point, it looks like a linear function. You can also do it formally as in the notes I have done as a, as a formal proof. OK, I want to make a little bit more advertisement for the chain rule. And the following problem is a, a applied problem. We have a 
we have a bug on the stove. It's a little bit a morbid story, but uh, don't worry, the stove is not that hot. But uh, here is the temperature distribution of the stove. It's just f of x of y is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared plus y squared. That's the temperature. And uh, we have here uh, just uh, level curves. And so it's hot here and it's colder more outside. And we have a bug which is moving around here. Just grab some more chalk here, yellow. <clears throat> so we have a we have a bug moving here on a parabola. Actually it moves like that. And uh, let me just take this, this is r of t. So this is uh, x of t, y of t. Let's take t square t. <clears throat> So this is the bug path. So now uh, we want to compute the, the rate of change of the temperature at which the bug feels. And uh, let's just uh, do it at the point maybe two to one here. So make another level curve here. So maybe this is the point two one, which is just R of one. So I want 1 plus t squared. The parabola doesn't go through the origin. I want it 1 plus t squared. So that's then 2, 1. And f of r of t, we have a 1 over, uh, and then we have 1 plus, and then uh, 1 plus t squared, squared plus t squared. <coughs> so this is a, a function of one variable. We can directly differentiate that. We can say, what is t over dt? f of r of t. So that's the uh, reciprocal rule minus, and then we take the derivative of the out of the function, which is two times one plus t squared times two t <coughs> plus two t. <coughs> See that that works, and then divide it by that whole thing: one plus one plus t squared squared plus t squared. The whole thing squared. <coughs> I already have a bracket here, square. Let's see that one can read this. So uh, this is t. <coughs> this is a bracket. So that we can now evaluate at t equal to one. And uh, so d over dt, f of r of t, at t equal to 1 <clears throat> is equal to, let's just see what we get. We get 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, plus 2 is 10, is minus 10. And then we have 1 plus 2 square, 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 6 square, that's 10 over 36. It's minus 5 over 18. <clears throat> Okay, let's do the computation again using the, the chain rule. What we have to compute is the gradient of f, which is uh, here, it's uh, minus 2x over 1 plus x squared plus y squared squared, and uh, 2y over 1 plus x squared plus y squared squared. And then we have to compute this uh, gradient at the point uh, 2, 1. At 2, 1, uh, this is 2x. No, that's x squared. <clears throat> so at 2, 1, this is 1 plus 4 plus 1. This is 6, uh, 6 squared. And this is minus 4, 6 squared, or 36. And here, uh, y equal to 1, it's minus 2 over 36. And the velocity r prime of t, this is just uh, 2t, 1, and then r prime of 1, at equal to 1, we are here at 2, 1, r prime of 1 is equal to 2, 1. <clears throat> and so if you take the dot product, the gradient of f of uh, <coughs> r of t, 1, times r prime of 1, that's just, if you take that out, it's minus 8 over 36 plus uh, minus 2 over 36 
it's minus 10 over 36, which is also minus 5. It's also minus 5 over 18. So you see, see we get the same thing. In general, this, this computation is much easier than, uh, than the direct computation. But we mostly use the chain rule also as a theoretical tool, at least twice in this course. But the reason why I come here like Frodo with a ring, you know, the wedding ring as a burden, I uh, want to tell you that the, the chain rule is actually a pretty universal thing. It binds all the other rules. So one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness binds them. So that's the, what I think about when I see the Lord of the Rings. I think, think about the chain rule. So let's just take, a, like, take the following function. So let's take fxy is equal to xy. And uh, let's just see what we have to do. And let's just take uh, r of t. This is x of t, y of t. <clears throat> So now we can compute the gradient, right? Gradient of f of x and y is equal to y x <coughs> and the r prime of t. Let's just leave it as x prime of t, y prime of t. <coughs> now what does the chain rule tell us, the multivariable chain rule? So the function, so we take x, y, we take the derivative of that. What do we get? We get, uh, uh, we get uh, f of r of t, which is just, uh, or we get the gradient, which is this. This is equal to yx dotted with uh, x prime y prime, which is equal to yx prime plus x y prime. <coughs> Isn't it cool? That's the product rule. So the product rule is a special case of the chain rule. Now we can of course do the same thing also with uh, fxy uh, is equal to x over y. Then uh, r of t we take the same. <coughs> and uh, we take uh, x uh, over y prime. So that, what is the gradient? I have to co compute the gradient first. <coughs> so the gradient of f, compute the gradient. <coughs> So the gradient of f is, <clears throat> is uh, 1 over y minus x over y squared. <clears throat> so what we get is what the chain rule tells us is what we take is uh, x over y prime. That's just the dot product between the gradient 1 over y minus x over y squared times x prime y square prime. This is uh, x prime over y minus x y prime over y square, which is equal to x prime y uh, <coughs> minus x y prime over y square. High the low, take low the high, cross the line and square the low. So that's the that's the quotient rule. And uh, you can of course also that's up to you. You can also show if you take f x y is equal to x plus y. What do you get then? Maybe this is up to you. But all the rules of differentiation are part of the, of the chain rule. And if you see, uh, or you have seen in single variable calculus already that, that uh, the chain rule is used to uh, compute uh, integrals uh, using the substitution. Uh, and this rule here is, uh, is actually used for, uh, for integration by parts. So in some sense, it's one ring 
we trolls them all and it's all the chain roll. <laughs>